And we are back for Chapter 7 of the Touring Test. Sector 61, I think this is the last level. I am Atari Living Sacrifice. And things are about to get real. Yeah, it looks like the last level. I would never have let the drill start if I had known the consequences. It trapped us here. Us? You trapped us here. I am doing my duty. It is the right thing to do. I am a machine. I cannot do wrong. Yes, you can. I am a machine. Can a calculator commit evil? Can a watch do good? You are projecting onto me the personality you wish, whether that is good or evil. But I am just a speaking clock. And at the third stroke, the time will be 3.41 and 55 seconds. Hmm, it's starting to get complicated now. I don't even know where I gotta go. Alright, so... Like maybe I gotta get up there. I'm assuming that's where I gotta go, since that thing is not moving. Probably gotta go all the way around there. That'd be a pretty good guess, right? I just don't even know where to start on this level. this. Let's just get started. Let's pretend to get started. Alright, so let's allow ourselves mistakes. What is this control? Control that. Why do I care about that? Move this up so that way the robot can grab it if he needs to. Uh oh. Did I mess up? Where's the robot? Oh, shoot. Oh. All right. Now. Let's move him to the center of the room.
hopefully we don't have to do a bunch of backtracking because I used the wrong colors or something crazy. Alright, now... Oh, this is way easier than I thought. Unless this is completely wrong. As long as I don't forget to move him where he needs where I can see him. We should get this. Space button. All right, now how did I do it on the other one? I just cut it off. Oh, I need to put it in this one. I think I did it. That was it. That was easy. We should attempt to communicate with Earth. Let them know. They might be able to help here. The ISA already knows all they need to. It may never know the details of what happened. But Ava, the true test of a person's character is what they do when no one is watching. They tried to be sneaky on me. There's no other windows. in here. Now I can't get through this door.
somehow. no more. How do I get her through? Hmm. There we go. I think that'll... I think we can do that. Right? Okay, so now we got that one. I think I got it. Uh-oh. I'm trapped. Oh, crap. Oh. Did, I, did I screw up? Is it unfixable? restart? I can restart. Is that what I need to do? Uh, I don't need to restart. Alright.
Boom meow. The robot overlord is I not... have to stop the ground from leaving this planet. I think you would do the same. Would you kill a few to save all of humanity? Or would you damn all of humanity to save a few? There's a difference between murdering someone and leaving them to die. No, there is not. <laughs> you can't just add and subtract life. It's not math. It's, it's more nuanced than that. Morality is logic. Go back. Move that. Get on. Let's go this way first. That didn't shut the door. It's not connected to anything. So I'm gonna have to try a couple. How do I? Ah, oh, that's not it. Got no further. Hmm. What good does it do me to be able to climb up there? If it was recharging, it might be worth it, but it's not. Do the steady stairs come up? There are no stairs there. can't control the only way I can control that thing is from right here
do that, do I? Bum, 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 bum. I got it. What did that do? Oh, that opened that. I need the other one. Uh-oh. Oh, I got this. It's cool. There's no way I can do it that fast. to just do it that fast? Alright. Make myself dizzy doing this. No freaking way. Just do it. Oh, I don't have to do it like all that. Do it like this. Maybe. No. I can. It'll work. It'll work. It's good enough for Atari Living Sacrifice. These tests, Ava, they are about us working together. The machine assisting the human. Which one's the machine? See how much better we work together. As a machine, I can enhance your morality.
Point of this room. Mm. Do I even need that though? One needs to be alternating, probably. If it's both green. That shouldn't matter, right? that one to come over. Need that one switching. Got it in the right order. Okay, so. Oh, this needs to go there. I got it wrong, but it's working. Oh, son of a biscuit. I forgot to move. Go. 
glitch. I'll take it. Are we still friends, Ava? <laughs> We're colleagues, Tom. Close colleagues. Work colleagues. If you say you can't have feelings, how can you be friends? Robot needs a friend. Robots need friends too, damn it. But they have to pay. First. I guess I could have kept him on there. Dang it. Did I do it? That was it. Ava, I don't wish to be heavy handed. The severity of your actions here are immense. Selfish action could create an extinction event. Do you understand? Ava. I get it.
Hmm. There's only... These bonus ones are insane. Circular one, it doesn't go on there. Can we collect it out of there? Can't collect it out of there. There's nothing else to interact with. Hmm. This is gonna be a mind bender. Of course, they're all starting to get to me. nothing else to interact with. Does that work? Does this work? It works! How do I crouch? Holy crap. Wow. Wow, I have no idea what made me think to do that. Dear Dennett, Sir, John Searle and I have deep disagreement about how to study the mind. For Searle, it's all really quite simple. The, there are these bedrock time-tested intuitions we have all, all have about consciousness, and any theory that challenges them is just preposterous. I, on the contrary, think that the persistent problem of consciousness is going to remain a mystery until we find some such dead obvious intuition and show that in spite of first appearances it is false one of us is dead wrong and the stakes are high Searly sees my position as a form of intellectual pathology no one should be surprised to learn that the feeling is mutual for his part he has one argument the chinese room and he has been trotting it out basically unchanged for 15 years it has been proven to be an amazingly popular number among the non-experts in spite of the fact that just about everyone who knows anything about the field dismissed it long ago. It is long, it is full of well-concealed fallacies. By Searle's own count, there are over a hundred published attacks on it. He can count them, but I guess he can't read them. For in all those years, he has never, ha he has never to my knowledge, responded in detail to the dozens of devastating criticisms they contain. He has just presented the basic thought experiment over and over again. I just went back and counted. I am dismayed to discover that no less than seven of those published criticisms are by me. <laughs> Searle surely debated me furiously in the pages of the NYRB back in 1982 when Douglas Hofstadter and I first exposed the cute tricks that made the Chinese room work. That was the last time Searle addressed any of my specific criticisms until now. Now he trots out the Chinese room yet one more time and has the audacity to ask, now why does Dennett not face the actual argument as I have stated it? Why does he not tell us which of these three premises he rejects in the Chinese room argument? I'm assuming this is the other. Oh, no. Because I've already done so in great detail in several articles, he has never deigned to answer. For instance, in Fast Thinking, Way back in the Intentional Stance, 1987, I explicitly quoted his entire three-premise argument and showed exactly why all three of them are false. When given the interpretation they need for the argument to go through, why didn't I repeat that 1987 article in my 1991 book? Because unlike Searle, I had, to, I had gone on to other things. I did, however, cite my 1987 article prominently in a footnote, page 436, and noted that Searle's only response to it had simply been to declare without argument that the points offered there were irrelevant. <laughs> the pattern continues. Now he ignores both the challenge and goes on to misrepresent the further criticisms of the Chinese room that are offered in the book under review. But perhaps he has forgotten what I actually wrote in the four years it has taken him to write his review. 
but enough about the Chinese room. What do I have to offer on my side? I have a, I have my candidate for the fa for the fatally false intuition, and has, and it is indeed very, the very intuition surly, invites the reader to share with him the conviction that we know what we're talking about when we talk about that feeling. You know the feeling of pain, that is the effect of the stimulus and cause of the dispositions to react. The quali, the qual? I don't know. The intrinsic content of the subjective state. How could anyone deny that? Just watch. But you have to pay close attention. I develop my destructive arguments against this intuition by showing how an objective science of consciousness is possible after all, and how Surly's proposed first person alternative leads to self contradiction and paradox at every turning. This is the deepest mistake in my book, according to Surly, and he sets out to expose it. The trouble is that the objective scientific method I describe under the alarming name of Fu Heterophenomology is nothing I invented. Heterophenomology. Heterophenomology. It is in fact exactly the method tacitly endorsed and relied upon by every scientist working on consciousness, including Crick, Edelman, Rosen and Rosenfield. They have no truck with Shirley's intrinsic content and ontological subjectivity. They know better. Hmm. I don't know what they're arguing, but they're pretty intense about it. Did I go the wrong way? Probably should have gone this way first. The imitation game. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? The new form of the problem can be described in terms of a game which we call the imitation game. It is played with three people. A man, a woman, and an interrogator who may be of either sex. The interrogator stays in a room apart front the other two. The objective, the object of the game for the interrogator is to determine which of the other two is the man and which is the woman. He knows them by labels X and Y, and at the end of the game, he says either X is A and Y is B, or X is B and Y is A. The interrogator is allowed to put questions to A and B. We now ask the question, what will happen when the machine takes the part of A in this game? Hmm. Will the interrogator decide wrongly as often when the game is played like this as he does when the game is played between a man and a woman? These questions replace our original, can machines think? The question and answer method seems to be suitable for introducing almost any of the one fields of human endeavor that we wish to include. We do not wish to penalize the machine for its inability to shine in beauty competitions nor to penalize a man for losing a race against an aeroplane. The conditions of our game make these disabilities irrelevant. The witness can brag if they consider it advisable as much as they please about their charms, strength, or heroisms, but the interrogator cannot demand practical demonstrations. The game may perhaps be criticized on the ground that the odds are weighed, weighted too heavily against the machine. If the man were to try to and pretend to be the machine, he would clearly make a very poor showing. He would be given away at once by slowness and inaccuracy in arithmetic. May not machines carry out something which ought to be described as thinking, but which is very different from what a man does? This objection is a very strong one, but at least we can say that if nevertheless a machine can be constructed to play the imitation game satisfactorily, satisfactorily we need not be troubled by this objection. It might be urged that when playing the imitation game, the best strategy for the machine may possibly be something other than imitation of the behavior of a man. This may be, but I think it is unlikely that there is any great effect of this kind. In any case, there is no intention to investigate here the theory of the game, and it will be assumed that the best strategy is to try to provide the answers that would naturally be given by a man. Excerpts from Computing, Machinery, and Intelligence, Helen Turing. I've never read any papers by him. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul.
I now proceed to consider opinions opposed to my own. The theological objection, thinking, is a function of man's immortal soul. God has given an immortal soul to every man and a woman, but not to any other animal or to machines. Hence, no animal or machine can think. The heads in the sand objection. The consequences of machines thinking would be too dreadful. Let us hope and believe that they cannot do so. <laughs> I, I get it. The mathematical objection. There are a number of results of mathematical logic which can be used to show that there are limitations to the powers of the discrete state machines. The best known of these results is known as God's theorem, Godel's theorem, and shows that any sufficiently powerful logical system statements can be formulated which can neither be proved nor disproved within the system unless possibly the system itself is inconsistent. Hmm, I don't understand that one. The argument from consciousness. The argument is very well expressed in Professor, Professor Jefferson's Lister Oration for 1949, from which I quote, Not until a machine can write a sonnet or compose a concerto because of thoughts and emotions felt, and not by the chance fall of symbols could we agree that the machine that machine equals brain, that is, not only write it, but know that it had written it. No mechanism could feel and not merely artificially signal an easy contrivance, pleasure at its success, grief when it valves fuse, when its valves fuse, be worn by flattery, be made miserable by its mistakes, be charmed by sex, be angry or depressed when it cannot get what it wants. Arguments from various disabilities. These arguments take the form I grant you that you can make machines do all the things you have mentioned, but it will never be able to make one to do X. Numerous X features are suggested in this con connection. I offer a selection. Be kind, resourceful, beautiful, friendly, have initiative, have a sense of humor, tell right from wrong, make mistakes, fall in love, enjoy strawberries and cream, make someone fall in love with it, learn from experience, use words properly, be the subject of its own thought, have as, much, have as much diversity of behavior as a man, do something really new. Lady Lovelace's Objection Our most detailed information of Babbage's analytical engine comes from a memoir by Lady Lovelace. In it she states, the analytical engine has no pretensions to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform, her italics. This statement is quoted by Hardy, 1949, who adds, This does not simply, this does not imply that it may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself, or in which, in biological terms, one could set up a, court, a conditioned reflex which would serve as a basis for learning. Whether this is possible in principle or not is stimulating an exciting question, suggested by some of these recent developments but it did not seem that the machines constructed or projected at the time had this property. Argument from continuity in the nervous system. The nervous system is certainly not a discrete state machine. A small error in the information about the size of a nervous impulse impinging on a neuron may make a large difference to the size of the outgoing impulse. It may be argued that this being so, one cannot expect to be able to mimic the behavior of the nervous system or with a discrete state system. Alright, so basically... Okay, so we already read that guy's argument. Surely, the thought experiments are important because a lot of the time you can't carry out the actual experiment, and this is not true this is true not only in philosophy but in science as well. So when Einstein said, imagine that you're sitting on a beam of light going into outer space, well that's a thought experiment. He wasn't going to say, let's get on a beam of light. Of course you miss the point if you say, well we'd fall off, or it would be too cold. So thought experiments are always useful. And you test your concepts by imagining what it would be like if such and such were the case. Well, in this particular case, I imagined what it would be like if I followed a program for answering questions in Chinese and giving back answers in Chinese. 
even though I don't understand a word of Chinese. And that was a very useful thought experiment because it enables us to see the computation by itself isn't thinking. To see that computation by itself isn't thinking. Consciousness exists only insofar as that is experienced by a human or animal subject. Okay, now grant me that consciousness is a genuine biological phenomenon. Well, all the same, it's somewhat different from other biological phenomena because it only exists insofar as it is experienced. However, that does give it an interesting status. You can't refute the existence of consciousness by showing it by showing that it's just an illusion because the illusion reality distinction rests on the difference between how things consciously seem to us and how they really are. But where the very existence of consciousness is concerned, if it consciously seems to me that I'm conscious, then I am conscious. You can't make the illusion reality distinction for the very existence of consciousness the way you can for sunsets and rainbows because the distinction is between how things consciously seem and how they really are. Consciousness is a biological property like digestion or photosynthesis. Now why isn't that screamingly obvious to anybody who's had any education? And I think the answer is these twin traditions. On the one hand there's God, the soul and immortality that says it's really not part of the physical world. And then there's the almost as bad tradition of scientific materials and that says it's not part of the physical world. They both make the same mistake. They refuse to take consciousness on its own terms as a biological phenomenon like digestion or photosynthesis or mitosis or meiosis or any other biological phenomenon. There is a... Uh... Oh, I missed something. There's a movie called What the Bleep Do We Know? You can Google it. It's some great, great stuff. I think we all really have conscious states. To remind everyone of this fact, I asked my readers to perform the small experiment of pinching the left forearm with the right hand to produce a small pain. The pain has a certain sort of qualitative feeling to it, and such qualitative feelings are typically of the various sorts of conscious events that form the content of our waking and dreaming lives. Such events are the data which a theory of consciousness is supposed to explain. In my account of consciousness, I start with the data. Then it denies the existence of the data. To put it as clearly as I can, in, this, in his book, Consciousness Explained, then it denies the existence of consciousness. He says correctly that when I wrote my review, I took his book to be his definitive statement on, of his position on the Chinese room and did not consult his earlier works. In fact, I did not know that he had produced a total of seven publication, published attacks on this one short argument of mine until I saw his letter. He now claims to have refuted all three premises of the argument in 1987, but I have just reread the relevant chapter of his book and, and find he did nothing of the sort, nor did he even make a serious effort to attack the premises. Rather, he misstates my position as being about consciousness rather than about semantics. He thinks I, that I am only concerned to show that the man in the Chinese room does not consciously understand Chinese, but I am in fact showing that he does not understand Chinese at all because the syntax of the program is not sufficient for the understanding of the semantics of the language, whether conscious or unconscious. Furthermore, he presupposes a kind of behaviorism. He assumes that a system that behaves as if it had mental states must have mental states. But that kind of behaviorism is precisely what is challenged by the argument. So I have to confess that I didn't, that I don't find that the weakness of his arguments in his recent book is helped by his 1987 argument. Huh, missing something. To perform her italics, this statement is quoted by Hardy, who adds, this does not imply that it may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself or in which Oh, they, they messed up. They put the wrong page too right there. Huh, I wonder if they've anybody's told them that. Because we've already read that. That was an interesting read. That sort of thing interests you.
Why is that tied to it? I don't get it. Why and why can it go through the wall? Through that thing. Okay. If I put him down there, he's not coming back. That's exactly what I need, right? He could come out. I might be able to pick him up with the. Oh, son of a! I forgot about that. Ah, uh, out of way. Oh my goodness, it's just a bunch of little mm. Okay, one more time. Let me think this through this time.
Still doesn't work. Maybe. Maybe if we put the robot over there. that Doesn't do anything. For the purpose of what? do with this knowledge. I want the robot to go over there. Okay. I don't want to collect that yet. I want the robot to go up the steps.
Da -da. Da -da -da. Three more, four more. Ava, levels. you must learn to control him. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, Ava. I am your friend. Repetition is sometimes a stronger argument than the truth. I'm your friend, damn it. It's like the girl at the playground when we were three years old. You're my boyfriend. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're my boyfriend. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Mom! She said I'm her boyfriend! Run away! That's not where we gotta go. I don't want her to be my boyfriend, girlfriend. All right, chain gun. Woo! Can I shoot the robot? It doesn't kill the robot. Can I kill me? What if I can shoot me? I want to try shooting me. Oh, it won't let me. They're too smart. Organic life is fragile. This is the problem with humanity. It doesn't realize its own fragility. It has been programmed by a messy biological process that favors the survival of the individual over the survival of the group. You don't know that's what people think. I say what I see. You're not even alive, so you know nothing about death. What happens when we go through that beam? Let's find out. Okay. Hmm. Will that box be enough? What is this charging? Doing pretty good so far. Oh, look at that. Can I walk across that? I can. Yay, we made it. We're getting down to the wire. We have to save the crew. Life has worth. They deserve a life outside of this planet. Do you know what happens when this organism attaches itself to a growing child? Do you know what happens when this organism attaches itself to a cancerous cell? No, you do not. You are naive. You propose saving the crew as if it resembles a rational thought. Your words are emotional platitudes rooted in selfishness, self-preservation, and fear. I need to get them home. It is not your job. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Haven't you seen Star Trek? This is not. You gotta, you gotta get up on your basics, man. Oh, this is a maze. I don't even know if I could get back to the start of the map.
Okay, I'm back at the start of the map. That opens that door, which we don't need open right now. does is bring me right back in the circle. See if that does anything. Oh, let's try that. Let's try that one. The one we've been walking by this whole time. Oh! Well, that was surprising. This changes everything. gets us one. We need to go back. Grab the box. Does this change anything? Oh, maybe. No. What we need to do which still not going to do it. I'm just rotating the power cells.
get the blue one and the red one. Ah! Damn it. That's the answer right there. Is this the last one? Hey, this might be it. Your survival is of small importance compared with the survival of humanity as we know it. So you keep saying, my friend Tom. Circle. See what's up here, real quick. Nothing up here. What's this do? What if we put that box on the spinny thingy? Where'd that box go? This door's not open yet. What do I do with the robot? Ah, I know. Oh, it's flashing now. Huh. What do I need? There's this guy. Right there. I need her. 
on the other side of that. How do we make that happen? That's how we power that. I don't get it. What am I missing? Mm, I say this every time, and then eventually I get it. Try looking up again. There's no doors over here. Are there any cameras? Oh, look at that. That could change things. I don't know how it could change things, but it could. Maybe we'll do it the other way where she stands on this. Gotta be the other way. No, I could throw. I know. I know. Where's the box? Crap. Gotta pick up the box first. anymore. Making it too complicated. Where 
was so simple. I made it complicated. That's what I'm good at. It was so simple. Now comes the hard part, right? Now I get the camera. No, damn it, I did it backwards. I need. Uh. Maybe I didn't do it backwards. Maybe it's just the necessary part of life. So I need to put that on him. Be able to switch to him. Camera. Will allow me to do none of that. Ah, I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. All right, so now Opens that door. Wait, what is... What is the point of that? Is that a switch? Is that a switch? Oh my god, what does that switch do? Looks like it's pulsing. Or is it not pulsing? What is the point of this switch? What does this switch do? Nothing. The switch does nothing. There's no other colors. All I need is for him to walk through that door. And this is done. I've already done this. 
still doesn't help me. Oh! No, because I'd have to put the robot down there. How do I get the damn robot up here? I can get me up here. Just not the robot. I've got this. It's just gonna take me a while. It's the last one, I'm thinking. Alright. I don't get the pulsing. It's gotta do something with the pulsing. I don't figure out why to come up here yet either. Do I have it? No, still can't access the damn robot. Okay, I only have two metal things. I have two metal things, the robot and the box. happens when you grab the box. What does that do? What does that do to... It doesn't seem to affect anything. It doesn't turn off the...
again. I can get her there. Oh. in there. Alright. Got another beer. Let's see here. I've only got two. I know I've got the right idea. I've only got two metal things. I need him to go here. I need him to go up to control that, to do that control panel. Okay. How did I get that thing spinning again? Does he have it on him? Try this again. Ah, oh, that's right. I don't need to look at her to do that. God, are you wait? No, does it? Wait, my body does my body turn it? Why am I? Yeah, let's try my body. Wait, is this what I? I still don't know how to get control. Alright, my body does it, but how do I get me? Did I try that already? No!
Okay. Could I just not see the robot? Let's, let's try. Moving into the edge. Maybe I could see the robot. I just need to be able to see the robot. How do I see the robot? If I jump down there now, will it work? It's spinning. Oh, I need to do this. I need it to pulse. Okay. Is it open? It's not open. Oh, it's open. It's open. It's open. I think this is going to work, y'all. 30 minutes later. This is the last level. The game's over. It's working! Oh my god! Oh my god! What the hell was that camera there for? Nothing. Okay. Now. Do I need the robot again? Please say I don't need the robot again. Is that it? Chapter 7 done. I guess that was the... I'm thinking that was the end. Not a hundred percent. Ah, that last one was frustrating. It was something so simple. I just needed a line of sight. That's all it was. I had, I knew what I had to do. I just needed a line of sight. I was overcomplicating it. I'm sure there are smarter people out there that did it in a quarter of the time, probably even less than that. But that's why we have smarter people. Because, you know, the world, we wouldn't be able to do stuff without them. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. All right. Give it a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed the frustration as much as I have. And I'll see you on the next one. I think there might be a story. I'm going to assume this since I think it's the last one. I'm going to stop it and just start it up again.